Hello everybody and welcome back to another um, Blueprint Clash of Plans video on the Clan Capital. Today we're talking about a, a defensive build, District Hall level 5, uh, Balloon Lagoon base. So this would be for uh, Capital Hall level 9 and level 10 players mostly. This base has been supplied by Akaza. I've probably butchered that name, apologies, uh, from the Spanish Clan One Fire War. They're currently uh, hovering around the top 40 in Clan Capital, uh, and much of it is due to their defense, uh, although they have a really solid offense as well. Uh, so we want to break down the space really quickly and see why it so often defends three attacks against very good attackers, uh, and most importantly against the graveyard that is so almighty powerful. Okay. There's a few key points here, so let's zoom in and break those down. The first thing you might notice is this weird wall contraption that's uh, set up on both sides here. And this is um, kind of the key to um, making the space work. Essentially, um, although these are very big um, clumps of walls, um, none of these are long enough uh, so that rams would target them uh, and consider them breakable. Only after all of these four compartments that you'll see back here that are pressed against the border of the map uh, are opened up, um, the Rams would then consider these the next best target as it's the uh, last closed off component of the base, so to speak. So it would take uh, an attacker a long time to, to and send in a lot of Rams through this deadly uh, defense crossfire to open up all of these compartments and um, then even more Rams to open up these walls to, to get a nicer pathing into the base. So unless you're willing to take that uh, huge investment, which most people will not because it's really inefficient, you are forced to send your ground troops through this channel and we all know ground is king in capital um so essentially you're really forcing the uh the attacker to walk right into your trap if they're using ground troops and why is this good well of course uh, uh the graveyard works um very well with ground troops especially with hogs and with wizards uh, and by by making them take this this way around the defenses you're uh, basically clumping them clumping them up a lot more than if they were able to, to if an attacker were able to drop all of these defenses uh, at once and if they're all clumped up well these rocket artilleries uh, will have a really really easy time especially since there's four of them um, to take down these troops efficiently and therefore uh, cause an attack to die out much quicker than it would if the base were more spread out and not pressed against this um, deployment zone um, that's surrounded by defenses here. The next key point and this is now what counters graveyard spells um, especially is how we group these defenses so close to one another. Of course, this opens up the base to, to wizard chains, but once again, uh, wizards are kind of ineffective against the base or much harder to pull off, um, simply because they are so uh, squishy and would all be forced under, to, to enter the base through this little opening under the rocket artillery fire, making it really, really tough to execute. Instead now, um, by ruling that out and then clumping up the defenses, we kind of force the skeletons since the uh, graveyard spell is so often dropped on top of these key defenses in the dead zone to either distract another key defense or take down much like a skelly donut in the main village to f well the skeletons are forced now to to spawn directly on top of this rocket artillery and um, we have a crusher here uh, a bomb tower here and all of these little point defense and the hidden uh, defenses on both sides as you can see um, protecting these uh, uh, artilleries and what that does is basically well we are uh, giving the skeletons the least amount of time to group up um, to hit this um, this rocket as a re and cause the damage that they usually do. So by basically protecting these key defenses with all we have, we are trying to avoid um, being overwhelmed by the skeletons as so often happens. This is part two and what's basically the most important bit of the base. Um, and this is something that you can execute in all districts, uh, but be careful of these pesky super wizards. And often you'll find these these kind of setups in uh, conjunction with with wall setups like these. Uh, uh, a few minor remarks then is basically you see we have these defenses around here um, just to fill up the space, keep the deployment area small, of course, but also to make the entry much more annoying. If you could deploy troops right into there, um, you would have basically a straight flank instead of like this 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 curved entry that you now have to take where troops can split in awkward ways, basically forcing attackers if they want to have this easier deployment zone to take these defenses out first. And these are annoyingly tricky to take out. You will need a lot of rocket loons or um, giants or barbarians or even archers to take these defenses down, which costs a lot of time and a lot of troop space for your first attack. And if you want to go with the cheapest option, skelly barrels, well, you're going to be in for a surprise because there's all these small bombs here 
that will help you um, kill these skeletons that drop down very fast and uh, cause the attacker to use a lot of troop space they want to use for the main push of the base. And lastly, a little trick, once again looking at the traps, uh, we have these little um, lock traps and small bombs all condensed on the back side of the base on both sides. Uh, and these basically try to catch the skeletons because once again we are expecting graveyard attacks um, off guard once they reach the back end of the base. Very often you'll see the troops dying out towards the end of the second attack or the third attack and then these kind of like few traps at the very back side of the base will be able to overwhelm all the skeletons and the tro other troops that are now grouped up um, and that try to collapse on these last few defenses of the base and then you'll be walking right into these traps and well right into the um, trap the base is set for you by and maybe sometimes this can even force another attack instead of making the uh, bonus gold um, gain much smaller so these are the main four points of the base even though there's um, uh, a few more other things to talk about these are the key points to take away um, feel free to copy the space uh, if you wish try it out for yourself see if you can beat it in less than three attacks and get some inspiration for your own builds and now we'll switch over to some replays uh, examining how skilled players and graveyard players um, will hit the space and how they might struggle with it. Okay, here we go with our first defense against Indian Vipers. Uh, they are bringing a bit of an off mana strat with the Super Dragons here, but it's a, a, a fair pick here. The main thing here is, of course, the graveyards coming in. Then, of course, they're trying to avoid these uh, annoying uh, uh, ground traps that we've set up for them. By, by flying straight over them. So they are now, after clearing out uh, quite expensively with the Rocket Lewis, these first few buildings, they're coming with a, let's say, contentious uh, Super Dragon deployment. They're losing one already against the Signal Inferno, which is very uh, externally placed here, and then under the Rage, the Super Dragons will get some decent value out of the base. But as you can see, there's now, with the Rocket Artillery shooting down the uh, next Dragon, there's only two Dragons left, and they've only just pushed past these um, L wall sections, to speak, so to speak. And now with the um, combined splash of the two rocket artilleries, the air bombs, and now the rapid rockets coming into play, they barely take down the first of the uh, four rocket artilleries and then die out, sending them straight to the second attack with a lot of base to go. And you can probably also already see where this is going now. They're, they're choosing the same strat, but now coming in from the other side, um, hoping that Skellies do some work at six, which won't quite work out for them because there's still a lot for them to get through. Um, but... Uh, they, they bring in the same strategy, basically, but now with a bit more uh, uh, of a, of a loon focus to tank for them going into the base, as they've already cleared out the um, initial defensive line um, outside of the walls. But once again, the, the Super Dragons just get blasted down because there's so much DPS that is so tight. And even though these buildings are um, quite compact, the, the Super Dragons don't get as much splash value out of... Um, out of, their, out of their breath attacks as one would expect and so they once again get a good chunk out of the base here but this is attack two and remember you're trying to usually clear these bases in two hits so now we're sent to attack three and while i i'll spoil that for you this will triple the base um they've already wasted an attack here and this is exactly what you want just imagine if you have eight districts and every uh, if the attacker usually should take two hits to clear the base uh say they take uh, three hits on, on seven of them instead. That's an ad additional seven attacks, uh, bringing the rate average from 17 attacks to 24 attacks, which is uh, a huge plus for your defense. And this is exactly what we're trying to do with these um, annoying um, spawn campy um, bases with the setups that I've just explained. So now this, this back end of the attack is a bit boring um, with the Flying Fortresses just coming through. Uh, and another rage still to go. There's not much uh, doubt that this base will now drop now that the backside is even opened up and these um, flying fortresses can do a lot of damage um, into these final few defenses. But that's three attacks. Um, use of this base, that's all we wanted. And here we go with defense number two. Now this is uh, against uh, one of the more popular strats, which would once again be the graveyard, now in combination with the hogs. Now they're bringing in an interesting... Uh, mix here to clean out the first few defenses um, with Inferno Dragons, but then again instead de decide to, to use some hogs in that, which is quite pricey even though they get the stuns. They are also not very deliberate with their rams, all sending, the, sending them in all at once. And so the these first few uh, 
troops die out rather quickly, but uh, it's now the skeletons that are trying to do work here. Interestingly enough, they've deployed one in the town hall, which isn't quite so well protected, so that will drop shortly. But you can now see already the effect of the defenses being stacked so tightly to one another. Um, uh, the, the graveyards of the first attack have all died out, and none of these two rocket artilleries or any defenses surrounding them have dropped. The hogs have cleared out the uh, initial section of the base and the first inferno tower, but uh, they've they didn't get any further because the graveyards didn't do their job and without any heals supporting the hogs they will die out rather quickly so this is the first attack and once again not a lot of damage to the base done the second attack brings uh i think the exact same army for them um trying to once again use some ramps but of course there's no ramps uh, that they can really like send deep into the base so some will run off to the six o'clock side even while some just target the open walls that uh, are behind them anyways and so now the hogs have a lot of uh, a lot easier time of course entering the base now that this section initially was opened up but it's quite costly for them nonetheless these defenses are quite bulky and because they're stacked so closely to one another there's a sort of like a lot of range benefits these troops can get uh, but now of course the hogs and the skeletons start to add up towards this section and the backside of the base will be cleared out opening up this deployment area but now you can see these troops once again all grouped up and uh, they will take some damage from the bombs once they get over there and now these troops come from the backside with the help of some infernal dragons um the rest of the hoywinds uh hawks here interestingly get deployed from the six o'clock side instead of supporting um the incoming army from the top side so uh, i think this attack could have pushed a little further if these hawks were deployed together um and could have profited from the, the tanking they uh, would have provided for each other. Uh, and they, they get a decent chunk of the base out here nonetheless. But uh, deployment or not, uh, this is once again a fail on the second attack, sending them through the third attack, which is exactly what we want. The graveyards in the first attack didn't get enough, um, leaving the second attack with too many defenses uh, for even six graveyards to overwhelm them. And of course, the the third review is uh, the third attack here is really just um, to, to to show you that the space was beaten eventually. Because well, um, even though these these uh, flying fortresses aren't maxed here, uh, as is the freeze, they have a very easy time getting through this remainder of the base now that everything's opened up, and there's really not a lot for them um, to get through. And especially now, of course, the freeze is quite potent. You can see here this is potentially something uh, you can abuse if you face some of these bases. Um, on offense um, to the, together with the rage you will have an easy time getting through a good chunk of the base but uh, whether if it's, whether if it's enough or not uh, is, is, is hard to say nonetheless so this attack 2 done once again netting you 3 defenses and this brings us to attack number 3 or defense number 3 which is uh, against uh, a clan in Kyrillic which I can't pronounce but once again, they're bringing in graveyards now in uh, conjunction with uh, rams and wizards for the first attack. And now uh, I know what you're saying. This deployment is very improper for the ram wizard strat. And uh, the wizards will quickly be without protection as all the rams die out um, way too fast. But um, crucially, what this attack will demonstrate to you is uh, even if the graveyards spawn at the maximum capacity they can with all these troops dying so rapidly, even then uh, the rocket artilleries and the um, defenses around them are fine uh, none of them drop to the graveyard and the, the menace that this graveyard usually wreaks showing you how powerful um, these clumped up defenses are now this brings us straight to the second attack uh, now with a switch up of attacks um, they are now which i think is very valid uh, switching to rocket loons and graveyards basically um, trying to circumvent the wall setup we've presented them here by flying just straight over them but they will find a few air traps they will find a lot of splash and um, therefore also die out quite quickly, especially since um, the, the attacker chose to, to go in from two different sides at the same time here, not trying to open up one side, interestingly enough, but both sides uh, defend quite well here. Um, the right side is suffering a little bit more, but even after two attacks, we still have four key defenses going strong in this space, forcing them to bring in once again more graveyards and more loons, which is what they go with. And uh, due to the um, horrendous nature of the first attack, you will now see that even this third attack will not quite be enough to clean out the remainder of the base here due to these defenses being so high level and the first attack being so weak. So in this case, we will even see a four hit. Um, and 
this is even though all spells were a graveyard so this is quite impressive <laughs> um another thing to notice here now is how these air defenses on the back end stay up for so so long um and how they're pestering all these loons which is uh another trick this base uses basically the the key defenses have well a lot more hp than the uh, regular defenses so the rocket loons and other defense uh, other troops um uh, will occasionally get stuck on them and this leads um to to them basically tanking for the the um high dps defenses that are then behind uh the rocket artilleries so you can see these uh two last defenses um uh, yeah pulling off the defense uh, here um uh, with just the capital hall and two of them standing or forcing them to use one final attack here and yeah this is really just a formality there's no way um this attack will defend um and this attack will fail and this wraps up our three hits and the showcase of the base so i hope you've learned something i hope you've found a new and successful base at the very least and uh see you all next time for uh, more clan capital content